Hello, dear students. Welcome back. So we'll continue with our third part of uh, the third chapter that is atoms and molecules. Okay. So today, yesterday we have discussed about the mass of an atoms. Clear. So today we'll discuss about the mass of some elements. And like I have said, the mass of the elements which I'll be uh, listing down now in the blackboard will be important because we'll be using those mass to calculate the molecular mass. Clear. So the first one, we'll start with hydrogen. Okay. Hydrogen. So for hydrogen, the uh, atomic mass will be one. This is U. Okay, U means that's the atomic mass unit. Okay, that's the unit. Now, second, let's take carbon. Okay, carbon. Carbon. The atomic mass would be twelve. Twelve U. That's the atomic mass unit for carbon. Third. Let's take about, uh, nitrogen, okay? Nitrogen, it is 14, okay? 14. Okay. So, students, you have to remember that whatever I'm writing, this is a relative atomic mass, okay? Relative atomic mass. Okay, now the fourth would be oxygen. Oxygen. So, for oxygen, it is 16 atomic mass unit, okay? So, this is U, okay? Now the fifth would be sodium. Sodium, the atomic mass unit would be 23. 23. Clear? Okay, so students, the sixth would be magnesium. So magnesium, it is 24. Clear? So these are the uh, atomic mass for these six elements. Now the seventh, we have sulfur. Sulfur, it is 32U, okay, 32U. Now we have uh, the eight, which I'm gonna give now, it would be for chlorine, okay? Chlorine is different. Now for chlorine, it is 35.5, okay? 35.5. Now uh, ninth, Let's take calcium. Calcium would be 40. Okay? So note this one down in your notebook. Uh, you have to note this one down. Clear? Because these are important. Clear? Okay. So students, if you are done with this one, uh, by using this atomic mass, let's try to calculate the molecular mass of some compounds. Okay? So students, now we are going to calculate the molecular mass. So the question will be calculate the molecular mass of a compound. So now let's first start with carbon dioxide. Clear. Carbon, the atomic mass for carbon is, just now I've written, right? That is 12. So 12. So now, see, students, we will add this one, okay? Now, carbon, we have written 12, right? Now for oxygen, the atomic mass I've given 16, right? But how many oxygen are there? Two, right? We have all two. So we'll write 16 into two. Clear? So that means we have 12 plus 16 into 2, that is 32, right? So now this one, if the, here we have the answer that will be 44 U, right? So the molecular mass for carbon dioxide would be 44 U, clear? Now let's see another compound. Let's see for Ammonia, okay? NH3 is the chemical formula for ammonia. Clear? Ammonia. Now, nitrogen. The, what is the atomic mass for nitrogen, students? Nitrogen. That is 14, right? 14. Now, hydrogen. That's the first one. Students, try to recollect what we have studied. One. So now, we'll write. But how many hydrogen are there? Three, right? 
So three. So okay, fourteen plus three. Right, students. Then we'll have seventeen here. Clear. So students, likewise, we can try. We can try calculating the molecular mass of any compound. Clear. Any compound. So last one. Let's. Uh, we'll do the third one. We'll do for water. Okay, water. So students, we'll uh, we'll do the third one. Okay, that is for we'll calculate the molecular mass for water. Okay. So now see, this one you have to practice. Okay. If you practice, you'll get used to all the numbers. So now see for hydrogen. Now we know, right? It's one. So now one into two. Because we have two, that's why I am multiplying with two. And then here we have to add an oxygen. Now it is 16, right? So now we have two plus 16. That means the answer we have is 18. That means uh, water, the, atom, the molecular mass of uh, water is 18. Okay, it is 18 U. Clear? So students, now uh, I'm sure you are clear with how to calculate this molecular mass, right? So now you know the importance of the uh, atomic mass of some elements that we wrote down. So you please go through that, okay, to be able to solve any molecular mass. Clear? So now we'll discuss uh, the name. We'll, we'll, we are done with this topic. Now we'll start the next topic that is ions. Okay, so students, now our next topic is ions. Okay, ions. Now, uh, in, a, in a chemical compound, okay, in a chemical compound, if there is a metal, metal, clear, and non-metal, clear, metal and non-metal, then it contains a charge species. And that charge species is known as ions, clear. Now see, uh, for just now we did like, uh, we studied about carbon dioxide, right? That means we have C, we have O2, carbon and oxygen. So they are, both are non-metals, right? Carbon is also a non-metal. Oxygen is also a non-metal, right? And let, what about uh, H2O? Hydrogen is not non-metal and then oxygen is non-metal, right? But now here in ions, we are talking about a compound, okay? That constitute a metal and a non-metal, okay? If we have this type of compound, then it contains a charge species. Charge species. Okay. And this charge species is known as ions. Clear? This charge species is known as ion. And then ions can be of two types, right? That is, get ion. Get ion means plus, positively charged ion. Okay, get ion means positively, positively charged ion. Clear? And anion. Okay, now anion means, anion means, Anion means negatively charged ion, okay? Negative charged ion. These two are different. Negative charged ion. Clear? So students, you have to keep this in mind. Cation plus anion minus. And this we get in a compound where we have a metal and non-metal, okay? The most common one will give, I'll give you NSCL. NSCL. Clear? NSCL. NSCL. Here in, here in NSCL, we have Na, this is uh, 1 plus and this is 1 minus. That means sodium has one positive charge cation and chlorine has one negative charge anion. Clear? So students, now uh, why I'm giving these ions because you in chemistry we get like uh, many compounds such as uh, H2SO4, HNO3, like we have many chemical formula, right? 
So uh, next, the next topic which we are going to study is chemical formula. Okay, so how to, how, after, after our topic is over, you will be able to write, you, uh, you should be able to write the chemical formula of any compound, okay? Any compound. The if the teacher dictates aluminum chloride, then you should be able to write with the formula. Clear? So now, next we are going to study about chemical formula, okay? So for that, we have to know these ions. Clear? So students, uh, now we are going to study about this chemical formula, okay? And what is this chemical formula? It is the symbolic represent representation, okay? Symbolic representation of its composition, okay? So now, in chemical formula, okay, before we start any chemical compound, okay? Before we start any chemical compound, we'll write uh, some... Uh, ions, okay, some valency, for example, like sodium, okay, since the valency is one, and sodium is a metal, clear, sodium is a metal, and since the valency is one, it has only one positive charge cation, clear, so you have to remember that, and same for potassium, 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 that is K, the valency is one, so for potassium is also one positive charge ions. Clear? Now, uh, here, one, uh, the easy trick that I want to give you is that for metals, it will be a uh, positive charge ion, and for non-metals, it will be minus, that is an ion, negative charge ion. Clear? So, I'll write, okay, for for non-metals, okay? For non-metals, let's say chlorine, okay? Chlorine, it will be one minus. And second, let's say, let's take uh, oxygen. Oxygen has two valency, clear? Oxygen has two valency. So now for oxygen, we'll, uh, it will be two negative charge ions, clear? So these are uh, some simple steps and here, you should remember that for metals it will be a positive charge ions and for non-metals it should be a negative charge ions clear okay now we'll apply all what we have learned and we'll try to solve some chemical uh, formula Okay, so students in your textbook, they have given uh, to write the chemical formula. Okay, that's uh, in your in, in text question. Okay, they have given to write the chemical formula of, they have given the name of some compounds. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll convert them into a chemical formula. So the first they have given is sodium oxide. Clear? Sodium oxide. Now, just know what we have learned. We have learned that sodium has how many charge students? It has one positive charge ion, right? So I'll write one plus here, okay? Just this one is for your knowledge, okay? We have to convert this one into a chemical formula. And oxygen, okay? For oxygen, oxygen, two negative charge ions, clear? So just now we have studied this one, right? Now this is sodium and this is oxygen, clear? So, so now in a chemical uh, formula, what you have to do is crisscross. Just remember this one, crisscross. Okay, you remember this one, right? So now for sodium, we have one, right? For sodium, we have one positive charge ion, right? And for oxygen, we have two negative charge ion, right? So students, crisscross means what? This one will take this one, this one will multiply with this one. Pretty simple, right students? We are just doing a crisscross. So after crisscrossing, we'll get Na into 2. That means Na2, right students? And then O into 1, that is oxygen. We have just 1 means, if you don't write anything, that is 1. So, 
So this is the chemical formula for sodium oxide. Clear? So now you may be wondering that in chemistry we have many chemical formula Al2SO4, H2SO4, right? But how we get that one? Just by crisscrossing. Clear? Now by crisscrossing, what happens is that the charge are balanced. Okay, the charge are balanced. And then the second important thing which you have to follow while writing a chemical formula is you have to first write, uh, start with the metals. So now even here, see, now we already got the chemical formula, Na2O, right? So we started with a metal and then we are ending with a non-metal, okay? So you should keep two things in mind, students. That is, we should always start with a metal and then followed with a non-metal, okay? And then by crisscrossing, what we are uh, getting is that the charge are balanced, clear? Okay, now we'll see the second question. Okay, so students, in your textbook, the second question is aluminum chloride. So how will you convert this one into the chemical formula? So the symbol for aluminum is Al, right? And chloride means that's chlorine, right? So Cl. Clear. Now, we have studied that. We have studied about the ions. Okay, we have studied that chlorine is a non-metal, right? Valency, and then we have studied about the charge, right? So non-metal is negative charge ion, right? Non-metal has negative charge ion. And for chlorine, we have one negatively charged ion, right? So that is an ion. And for aluminum, it is three positive charge ion. Clear? So students, now we have formed this one. Will you be able to uh, get a chemical formula for aluminum chloride by this formula? What formula we have to apply? Crisscross. Right. So after crisscrossing, we'll get Al. Al into one means that's just Al. Right. Now Cl into three, that means so we got AlCl3, that is the formula for aluminum chloride. Clear? Now we'll try the last one. We have four questions in your textbook. Okay, so we'll do the third one and the fourth one you should try at home. Clear? Okay, so students, now we have magnesium hydroxide. From, from the word itself, we, are very, uh, we know that magnesium is a metal, right? Then we should begin with a metal that is magnesium. So magnesium, the symbol is Mg, right? And magnesium has two positive charge ion, clear? And then this is hydroxide, okay? Hydroxide. So now hydroxide has one negative charge ion. Clear? So now what we will do is that we will apply the same formula crisscrossing. Okay, crisscrossing. But students, now you have to be careful here. Okay, now see. Everyone, look here, students. So you have to write, okay, MgOH, right? Now, Mg into one means, that means that's just one means we'll keep as it is. But students, now OH into two, right? So students, they usually write like this. Clear? So that is wrong because this is together, right? So you have to put a bracket, okay? So this is how we get magnesium hydroxide, clear? So we are done with the tr first three uh, chemical compounds. You try the fourth one, okay? So students, uh, please take a note of everything we have studied and do practice all these calculations at home, okay? Thank you so much. See you in the next class.